They're good. <laughs> Pretty good. I hate when I see guys that are good. I'm like, fuck. More, well, more good fighters. Jared, let's talk about your fight a little bit, man. Congratulations. I know this is a big win for you, one that uh, meant a lot to you as well to, to, to win it here in New York. Um, talk to me about the emotions coming out of being the first guy to TKO Mark Madsen. Uh, I mean, he's only had – that was a six UFC fight, so. <laughs> uh, it was great, though. I mean, it's been a long year for me, a lot of ups and downs, more downs than ups, and, you know, it's coming to my hometown – Right. I was literally in this area for years. I trained at Henzo Gracie's down the block. I feel like a broken record because I said this 50 times already. But uh, my grandfather fought in Madison Square Garden four times. He was a pro boxer. He was really good, too. He was 38 and 3 as a pro. Better record than mine. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was born in Manhattan. I've been here forever. And, you know, I used to shoot heroin all over this area. And, so, and I used to walk by the garden, like, oh, one day, like a high on heroin, like, oh, I'm going to fight there one day. Like, and uh, it was a pipe dream, you know, and uh, here I am. How do you channel all those emotions? I think a lot of times when people compete at home, it's like, oh, you know, I used to like to watch the Rangers play. But for you, you have the family ties, you have the, the, uh, the, the addiction ties that you just mentioned. How do you channel all that on a fight week and, and get it done like you did? I don't know, honestly. Um, I just have faith and trust in God's plan. And first of all, I work my ass off. I don't cut any corners. I'm in the gym every day, never miss practices. I do everything. I torture myself on my own. So, and I do what I know I have. I do what I'm not good at as much as possible. So I know that, you know, I won't have any weak areas. And uh, I've been doing this for a while. I have a lot of fights and you know, I'm a little older now. I'm not 23 anymore. <clears throat> so, hard work, consistency, and faith, and, and that's how I get it done. Given all the meaning this fight had, um, where do you feel like this ranks in your career moments? It's pretty high on the list, definitely. Pro I guess it's the highest moment for me. My debut was pretty cool, my UC debut, but losing to Patty was pretty cool, too. <laughs> um, that helped me, actually. Silver lining in that one, but yeah, this one was, it's definitely up there. And I guess, is that some sort of reassurance for you at all? Like in this journey that, you know, four, uh, 14 fights into your UFC career, like you've had ups and downs, but here you are and in, in your most recent one was your highest moment. I mean, it's never gonna be easy for me. No matter what I do in life, everything's always been like a struggle. Nothing was ever handed to me. Nothing's ever been handed to like my friends and family. Everyone that's around me has like a tough go at shit. Like, uh, you know, there's people who have like, it's like, well, how is our path so easy? That's never been my case, no matter what I do. So um, it's just nor it's par for the course for me. I guess where do you go from here? This one just got over. Are you trying to get back in there soon? You feel relatively healthy? I'm healthy, man. I, I want a top 15. I don't know what else I got to do to get a shot at it. I think I deserve it. I mean, I just finished a guy in the first round who's a silver medalist. I don't know, man. I think I deserve it. Is, is the Patty rematch on your brain at I mean, all? Dude, still, I was or? beating Bobby Green. He's ranked now. I was beating him, and then he, like, blatantly headbutt me. And I'm not, like, I don't think, I'm not saying he did it on purpose. And I'm happy for him, man. The guy also has had so many ups and downs. He's older than me, and look where he is now. He actually inspires me. He inspired, when I saw him knock out Grant Dawson, someone that I lost to, I think I was, like, one of Grant's hardest fights until he caught me in the end. You know, <clears throat> for Bobby to do that is amazing. Good for him, man. He deserves it, you know. Um, and same with Patty. Yeah, whatever. I'm not saying he controlled that and what happened in our fight. But good for him, man. He was able to exploit himself. <laughs> and uh, look, at, look at him. He makes more money than – I'm sure he's doing really well for himself. And congrats, congrats. Now he's fighting Tony Ferguson. Good for him. Can I drink this? All right. Yeah, right here. Um, I know personally you said, like, you're happy for them and everything, but professionally, was it difficult at all watching, like, you know, Bobby Green get this big Tony Ferguson fight and then main eventing and then Patty mm -hmm. getting the big name in Tony Ferguson? I mean, it's not like the UC is, like, not doing me any favors. They gave me some good fights recently. Yeah. You know, this was a favorable fight for me, too, against a guy with a good name and a good resume. 
Uh, he gave me, they gave me Bobby Green after the, Bob, after the Patty fight. That was a big name for me. And, you know, I was doing my thing until, you know, I got no, it was no contested. So, I mean, you know, Tony's still a tough fight, even though he's, he's going to go down as a legend of the sport, I think. Um, he's had a rough go. But, you know, this is MMA, man. This is UFC. This ain't, there's no, like, the math. The way people's paths, everyone's different. Everyone has different lives, different paths. So, you know, but I don't know. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel you. All right. Uh, have you seen the videos of Tony training with David Goggins and like throwing up after being on the treadmill and everything? <laughs> I saw some of it. I, don't, I actually don't watch anything. Like when I see, I don't like really pay much mind to that stuff. But I saw like an article. Oh, he's Tony, and uh, that's cool. He's a freak, Tony Ferguson. Good for him. Like he. He'll do all sorts of weird shit. So, hey, it works for him. It worked for him for a while. Uh, but David Guy is man, are you going to run 50 miles a day? That's not going to help you in a fight. <laughs> you, should go, you should go practice MMA if you want to get good at fighting, right? Um, and you mentioned the, the silver lining in that loss to Patty. Was that just the amount of, like, support you got after that in the eye? Yeah, I you? mean, my following had skyrocketed. Um, what sucked about it, though, was, like, for the last year, everyone was like, you're the guy that lost to Patty. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm known for, being the guy that got robbed by Patty. That's how it felt, at least. And my wife would always be like, shut up. Like, you're so stupid, you know. Um, and I had to, like, you know, get back in the wind column for that to, like, go away. Um, but, yeah, he helped me. His popularity helped me and my following. So here, uh, there was a silver lining. And I think if I won, people would be like, oh, <clears throat> you won a boring fight against a guy that sucks. That's what they would have said. Sure. So like, it, I think in the long run, it's probably better, besides not getting my other paycheck oh, yeah. from that fight. Right, right. <laughs> um, and I know you said you wanted a top 15 opponent, but is there like a return like time frame you would want? I mean, you said hopefully you were by like tomorrow, I'll f you know, see, cause it, you know, it takes a little while for all the bumps and bruises to set in. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> I do want to go on vacation, but, um, if they offer me something, I'll take it and get back in camp. So I'm healthy. Jared, over here. Bro. Sorry. Congratulations, man. Um, tonight's also your first finish in the UFC yeah. since your debut. Pathetic. So <laughs> I was going to say, how does that feel on top of all this? It's so weird because, like, when I was younger, I don't know. I think I had, like, no fear, and I would just go into fights, and I would just finish people. <clears throat> and then you start getting hurt in fights, coming out injured or spending like the week in the hospital after a fight and you're like, uh, maybe I shouldn't like brawl with the person, you know? So you're, you're changing, you change the style of your fight, the way you fight. You play a little, and there was also a point where I had my back against the wall a couple of times. Like, yo, I'm coming off of two losses. My first four UFC fights, I lost, I won my, I blew through my first two fights. <clears throat> then I lost my next two. They made me fight my contract out. And luckily, I got fight of the night on my last contract on my last fight, and they gave me a new contract. I was, my contract was void. I was real, I wasn't a signed fighter, but they gave me a new one. <clears throat> so, wait a minute, what, did you, what was the question originally? About how good the finish felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I started changing the way I fight, and I was just like, I just gotta win fights. Like, fuck, worrying about the finish. That will come. And then it took like six years for it to happen again. <laughs> well, the, the, the uh, level of competition tonight. goes up too. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Hopefully this is the start of a lot of finishes. <laughs> but it feels very good. Yeah. And then last one from me. MSG, done. Anything else in the bucket list in terms of arenas? No, I don't really care, to be honest. I just don't want to like go far. Like I phone Abu Dhabi, that shit sucked. It was nice, but like traveling that far to fight is not convenient. Thanks, Jared, to your left. I know you touched on it briefly in the octagon, but and I know we've talked about how you've had some bad breaks over the last 11 months. Nothing compared to what you've been through. I mean, your story, and you hear Andre Pastrovsky talk about it as an inspiration. It's so inspirational how you got here. Are you able to appreciate it in the moment right now, or is it something that it's just too heavy, too much depth to really... I mean, again, it's, it's a remarkable... And the fact that you're winning fights, finishing Mark tonight, it's an inspirational story. Are you able to process that right now? Yeah, I mean, I've been processing it for like the last eight years since I got sober. Um, it's crazy, I guess. For me, though, it feels like I'm just going about my day. Yeah, I used to shoot heroin. Now I fight in a cage in the UFC. 
So it's kind of just like, <clears throat> I was, I'm an extremist with everything. If I'm going to be a criminal and a drug addict, I'm going to do drugs the best way I can, and that's with a needle. If I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight in the UFC. I don't want to fight in some fucking regional bullshit. Um, so if I'm doing something positive or negative, I'm going as hard as I can in either direction. Luckily, I'm on a positive note now. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, at your lowest point, I mean, I know it's you couldn't really fight in New York for so long because of the regulations. So it's your first win in New York, and you did it at MSG, which is remarkable. At your lowest point, did you ever think this could happen? Yeah, yeah. You know, I never really, t like, thought anything was impossible. Um, and people always say to me, like, how do you... Like, how'd you go from that to that? And I'm like, I don't know. I just put one foot in front of the other, had a little faith, and worked hard, right? I mean, it's amazing what we can do if we just uh, are consistent and work hard. That's it. And have, you know, have a faith. Congratulations. Thank you, bro. Hey, Jared, given the um, history that you have here, did you walk a certain way here? Did you take the subway? Did you pass by certain places that you Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was at Henzo's, the gym I used to train at, it's two blocks away, <clears throat> and there was a, on the third floor, like the cage, and there's a bathroom in there, and I used to shoot dope in that bathroom all the time, and I went in there, and I was like, ha, ha. oh yeah, love this place. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, there's, there was a Fresh & Co. restaurant across the street, I don't think it's there anymore, it's another restaurant, but I used to shoot dope in that bathroom, in the bathroom in Penn Station. Um, so yeah, I mean, like when I walk, go, like when I see these places, I'm like, <laughs> like, it's like nostalgic for me. Heroin is like a nostalgic thing for me. I don't know, it might sound weird, but like I could like really like remember and feel it. And uh, it's awesome to like be like, yeah, now instead of like getting high here, I'm like fighting in the UFC here. It's, it's pretty cool. When you had those times, um, did you ever like look, like you said, like if there was a fight happening here or like a Knicks game where you're like, one day, like, I'd like to be in there. Like, did you ever think that? Like, one day, like, I'd like to f fight there? Yeah, of course. Um, I used to come to boxing matches, come to Ranger games. Um, when the UFC had their debut here, I was sober at that point. But, you know, I was always, of course, I think it's everyone's dream, right, to fight. Or if, if you're a fighter, to fight Madison Square Garden. Um, and, yeah, so it's all check that off the bucket list your grandfather is in history here four fights here tell me what that means so now you're p part of that now you've you've won your first fight here yeah it's crazy my grandfather was a pro boxer grew up in harlem uh he was 38 and three as a pro he was a really good boxer uh and it's really funny because i walked like in his footsteps he uh, he he got arrested in detroit uh it was the it's I can actually pull the article up on Google. It's, uh, it was the largest heroin bus in Detroit history. He, yeah, he, he did eight years in Michigan. I have pictures of him in prison boxing. He boxed the whole eight years that he was there. Um, he died an alcoholic. He came out of prison and he went back to uh, being a criminal. And uh, he ended up dying an alcoholic. So my mom always says to me, her, it was her father, like, that I turned it around, you know? Like, he ended his life as an addict, alcoholic, and I've gotten sober. So, uh, I don't know, kind of like breaking a family curse, you know? It's pretty last, crazy. My last question. We passed by these people on our way here. This will be packed tonight. And we passed by people who are going through tough times, panhandlers, drug addicts. There may be someone who sees your story on TV. Tell me what, by the way, you've done such an amazing job of saying you can do it too. If someone sees your story tonight, what do you have to say? There's always a way out, you know. No matter how far down the hole you are, you can turn it around. But you just need to have faith in a higher power and take some suggestions from some people. And if you're sick, uh, get some professional help. That's how it goes. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Sure. I have one question as well. Okay. Um, are you surprised that it was over so fast? You know, I hit him with that right hand, and like he fell back, and I was like, "Whoa, it's pretty cool." <laughs> um, am I surprised? No, four ounce gloves. 
large men hitting each other in the head. It happens fairly easily, actually. <laughs> if, uh, if you punch me in the head or in the jaw right now, you could knock me out. So I'm not really surprised. And how is Mark different from other opponents? He wasn't really too different. Um, I've, I think I've fought other opponents who are, well, I know I fought other opponents who are more experienced and I guess better. Um, but he, I, I heard this week, they were like, with over 3,000 wrestling matches, and I was like, holy shit, 3,000 wrestling matches, like, I didn't have one wrestling match in my life, um, I just had a couple of MMA fights, <laughs> so I was like, how am I going to catch up to this guy, but, you know, I put the work in, and I've been fighting since I'm 17, I'm 35 now, so I got some experience. And do you have any advice for him now? Take your time. Don't make any rash decisions. But the man is, he's, a, uh, he's 38. He's an Olympic athlete. He knows what he needs to do and what he shouldn't do. So he did say to me uh, post-fight that he said this was a very hard fight for me to take. And this is probably my last fight, so thank you. And, I, and so we hugged and... Um, I couldn't really get, they were like calling me away to Joe. So I didn't have an, an, like a lot of time to speak to him, but uh, I hope he's all right and I wish him the best. Did you know about Mark's like history of wanting to fight here at all? He was supposed to compete here and then 9-11 happened? Um, I know that my manager, we have the same manager and he was like, yeah, Mark, really wanted to fight here and, and I know you wanted to fight so I'm asking you if you want you know do you want to fight him and I was like of course uh, so that's all I got but I didn't know there was history behind it yeah, I guess he was supposed to compete in the world championships in 2001 but then I think September 11th oh, happened wow. and stuff and they canceled it dude I was like t five years old in 2001 well I was 13 but that's crazy good for him that's awesome that's it thanks guys